Welcome to the Disruptive Innovation Festival and thank you for joining us during this session today. How do you introduce the concept of, the circular, of a circular economy for the first time in a city? Well, today we're going to explore how it is to be at the start of the journey in the Spanish city of Valladolid and how that approach sits within a wider dynamic of the circular transition at the national level. We probably have people in the audience who don't know where Valladolid is, and that's fair enough. It's not the most popular city in Spain, but that's why I've brought my explanatory map with me. So you can see where Valladolid is painted with the red color. So it's more or less in the center north area of Spain. And my name is Laura Franco now, and I am delighted to welcome Beatriz Quintana Vega and Jesus, Jesus Gomez Perez. Welcome to the DIF. Hello. Welcome. Hello. Tom, <laughs> nice to see you, at least, Laura. <laughs> nice to be with you here. Yeah. And <laughs> um, Be Beatriz, or Bea, uh, is the CEO of the startup B Circular, whose mission is to guide leaders, companies, entrepreneurs, institutions, and the public administration through the process of generating circular thinking and solutions. And Jesus is the managing director of the Agency for Innovation and Economic Development of Valladolid's City Council. And with Bea, they are both two of the people that are starting to promote a, a circular economy transition in Valladolid. So we'll be taking questions throughout the session. Please put your comments, questions for Jesus and Bea in the comment space next to the stream on the session page. And also you can ask us questions through Twitter by using the hashtag ThinkDip. Now we want to start maybe with a little bit of introduction to the topic at the national level. So let's talk about Spain first. Bea, can you provide us with a general view of how the concept of a circular economy has been approached at the national level? Yeah, sure. So actually the circular economy was introduced in Spain by the European Union with the Action Plan for the Circular Economy in 2015. After two years, uh, 50 cities signed the Declaration of Seville for a circular economy. And nowadays the governments uh, is working in the strategy of circular economy in Spain 2030. So hopefully we'll have very soon. Uh, I would like also to, to explain uh, some direction that Spain is taking towards circular economy. The first, uh, to improve sustainable management of the resources. Uh, the next step, we'll love to prevent and source the waste with eco-design and eco-innovation because the current policies are still aimed at solving uh, the ways in this final phase. So I think prevention is more than necessary. And the last step is the separation of economical development to environmental pressures. So when we talk about circular economy in Spain, um, I also would like to highlight two cities that are pioneers in developing circular economy strategies. One is the Basque Country, that have their own circular economy industry diagnosis and is also promoting an initiative called Circular Thinking Euskadi Towards Circular Economy. Very interesting from the IOVE and the Basque government. And also Catalonia has their own strategy to impulse the green economy and the circular economy. So both cities are a very good examples of what is happening in, in Spain. Thank you, Bea. I think it's wonderful to see that the th things are happening in, in other regions like the Basque Country or Catalonia. And could you give us all some examples of, of businesses or startups uh, that show how the circular economy is being implemented in Spain? Yeah, sure. So, yeah. Yeah, so actually, I would like to talk because we don't have enough time only about mobility and, and waste <clears throat> and organized waste. So in terms of mobility, uh, the electric cars is starting to be a reality for the citizens. There are even municipalities that have already included the electric vehicle on public buses, for example, Valladolid. But even in Basque Country, they have done tests with automatic and not driving electric buses. I bring you two examples uh, of companies, Ecoltra and Imove, that they are working in, in Madrid and Barcelona. And they are electric motor and car sharing companies that already work with circular methodologies. Um, in terms of, of waste, there are um, other three companies, the organic waste applications, that prevent the leftovers from being eaten out in establishments. So 
they put in contact customer with establishment that have food in perfect conditions, but they hasn't found a final customer. So using this mobile, the users reserve the products at a lower price and after they can collect it. So I think there are very good uh, initiatives that are happening now. And the last one is Art and Waste. It's called Basurama. And there is a collective art project dedicated to the research, creation, cultural and environmental production, giving another meaning to the waste. So they have a, they are very good examples of what is happening now in, in Spain. Thank you. And I, I'm sure we could, you know, g give some more examples and keep talking about what is happening in Spain around circular economy for quite a long time. But I want to move to Valladolid because that's the focus of, of today's session. And cities play a crucial role in the transition to a circular economy. And actually, cities in transition is one of the key topics of this disruptive innovation festival this year. So they've we acknowledge that they've become critical as political decision-making bodies representing the world's largest uh, concentration of resources, energy, and information. So they are at the heart. They are the heart of innovations and, and technology uh, in the 21st century. So Jesus, now I want you to speak a little bit, and I think it would be great if you begin by giving the audience a bit of uh, a context of how the the topic of a of the circular economy has uh, taken off in Valladolid. Well, thank you very much, Laura. Um, Valladolid has launched as of this circular economy roadmap in 2017, in the summer of 2017, recently. Uh, we decided just to follow other cities, uh, the path of other cities like uh, Edinburgh or Amsterdam or München. And um, we started, we started uh, from the very first beginning. Uh, so we, um, we see our roadmap uh, as a dynamic document uh, that we update very often because it's not only a guideline, uh, but also a kind of a repository with all uh, the actions done and to be done. Uh, let me share uh, with you. Um, get this roadmap. First of all, we started with the uh, um, with the cost cutting approach, so uh, technical cooperation and political support, which is very important. Uh, for us just to uh, to get uh, the, this political support in order just to foster uh, the circular economy in the city. Um, we try to settle some indicators. Um, of course, a, a diagnosis was uh, uh, needed and we uh, were working on this and we expected to have early an important external support of, uh, for that. Uh, indicators were settled down. And uh, we did uh, also um, a mapping of flows uh, uh, among the, all the stakeholders of the, of the city. We follow up with uh, a communication plan among all the stakeholders, um, raising awareness, um, not only um, uh, on the uh, academia or institutions or enterprises, but also and particularly on citizens. And uh, we end up um, uh, trying to promote uh, entrepreneurship, uh, which uh, also is um, is a well, act actually, is a, is a very big uh, deal as well for the for the city council as well and the agency of innovation and economic development. And we try to focus just on the on circular uh, economy. We foster uh, two items: so circular weekend, which uh, I will uh, go more in depth so uh, lately, and the circular lab. And lately, last but not least, uh, um, uh, we um, uh, became members of two uh, uh, international uh, city uh, networks, which one is uh, EuroCities and the other one is International uh, Michelin Cities. And uh, within a group of um, uh, a working group named Economy, we try just to um, to foster the um, very first indicators among among this this uh, very big uh, uh, network uh, in uh, Ljubljana last year about uh, econ uh, circular economy. Um, I'm not going through the actions in detail, but uh, I, I would like just to to take some minutes to present uh, maybe as some some uh, some um, actions as I will. About grants and uh, and actions we we, we are um, presenting uh, in the city uh, in in Valladolid. 
Okay, yeah, that's great. I, I think uh, it would be great if, if we could see uh, some of the projects and events that have been taking place in the city or that are about, are about to happen uh, in the in the closer future. So it would be great if you can if you can give us you know some like an overview of, of these examples. Yeah, um, as I said, so I, I um, okay. We launched so, uh, from the municipality. We launched so, some subsidies. Uh, to circular economy in uh, four lines. One of them is were the, were, were the, uh, was the training actions, the second one awareness actions and dissemination, the third one is research studies and demonstration, and the fourth one uh, implementation. More of, uh, all of them also has uh, a, a specific evaluation criteria. And, um, and last year, at the end of the year, we were uh, quite uh, impressed about the uh, results of this uh, uh, municipal subsidy. We uh, um, we get 23 uh, projects, very interesting, in some uh, in related to some sectors, as so water, food, economy, waste, energy, communication, and citizen uh, citizenship uh, participation. More of them are related. Uh, as you can see uh, right now on the, on the display, and um, and they are ongoing, running uh, till um, February February uh, 2018. Um, we uh, decide to um, put on 400,000 uh, euros in this project to test, not just to test, not only the market, uh, but the answer of the citizenship. Uh, how they are um, they are answering us also to our call uh, uh, from these uh, municipal subsidies, and we were really really uh, happy about that. Okay, um, I would like to to ask you before we go into detail with some examples of of projects and events that have been taking place in Valladolid. You have already mentioned actually two like circular weekend and. And I think another one that it was called Circular Lab, but I will let you explain it. But I'm wondering, um, Jesus, what opportunities did you identify in Valladolid that made the circular economy concept an interesting approach to be developed in the city? Well, actually, so we, have, we, we are a medium range uh, uh, city and uh, all is, is right now has to be done. I mean, so there is a very a very good platform, also just to test also how circular economy are, um, are developing in some some sectors. I mean, maybe water, plastic, eco innovation, um, eco design, and um, uh, the best the, the very best testing point also is the Agency of Innovation and Economic Development. So we're hosting not only also the circular economy here, but we're trying uh, uh, we're presenting our our um, well, our very best. Uh, um, um, uh, projects also to uh, to two uh, European project to the call to one call right now and uh, on the, which is uh, about to 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 released in 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 December and one call an H twenty twenty project as well uh, next year. Um, Secret Lab is just a project, so we are defining as the very best uh, place to um, to establish also this uh, this laboratory. We focus on some laboratories, uh, like for example uh, Logroño, the very first one, or uh, some testing laboratories, some kind of laboratories, like in, in Munich or in Amsterdam. But uh, we want to just to focus on the specification of this city and uh, the range of this city and the necessities also of the um, the newcomers and uh, new enterprises. Okay, so I think I think it would be it's the right moment now to show uh, some examples of of. Of you know how, what things have been done in in Valladolid uh, around the circular economy and how the concept is being you know um, introduced to people in the city because I'm sure that it's a new concept to many many people in in Valladolid. Of course, of course. Uh, this um, we have uh, just uh, five for you as, well as, as a very good example of what uh, what uh, we have succeeded in in the last uh, in the last year. Uh, one of them is Lana Land. This is a project which uh, which uh, um, is a research and demonstration project of uh, vegetable coverages with sheep wool. Um, it's highly insulated, and uh, this cover can be used in the construction of gardens and green roofs. Uh, nowadays, so we are just uh, testing this uh, green uh, this green roof 
in one municipal uh, building. The second one is in Pluvium. Uh, this project uh, is to design the potential of a rain collection system. In Pluvium comes from uh, a, war, a, Roman, a Roman war, which is a rectangular pond with with a flat bottom designed to collect the rainwater that was in the vestibule of the old houses of the Greeks, Etruscans and Romans. And, uh, well, this water is need to be collected as well in, in, the, in the flood zones uh, to reuse in school and urban gardens. And, uh, of course, this project needs a, a water pump to integrate the water into the circuit of the house. But uh, actually, as it's, it's, very, it's very interesting and it's running nowadays in, in, the, in the two schools of the city. The third one is Kitsol. Kitsol is, uh, is a demonstrative and uh, itinerant prototype of uh, um, renewable electric self combustion uh, device. This uh, portable solar photovoltaic kit it was used not only in... Uh, Outside in some events, uh, uh, outside but inside also, uh, uh, in in, an, in a in presentation in a congress in a bio citizen co conference uh, hold, uh, held in, in in Valladolid, with um, some kind of success because um, we tried to match not only this photovoltaic, photovoltaic kit but also how they provide electricity to uh, one concert live and uh, people were uh, very, very happy about that. Uh, the next one is Madera que revive. Yeah, <clears throat> so I'm going with that. So Madera que revive is a very interesting project that reuse the waste from the from wood waste. And with that, we they build biodiversity shelters. So you can see on the right or on the left, no, how there are different insects, like hotels for, for, for birds or bats. And another one that is going to be the last one is called the Cultura Circular, Circular Culture. And this one I also participate as a, as a co-creator. And we were um, two months in the street talking with the neighborhood and explaining what is a circular economy through a kitchen made with pallet. And you can see it was very attractive for the people. So it was a a good uh, way to uh, demand people and ask people to, to come and talk with them. So it was a very interesting project also. And I'm, and I'm wondering, Bea, especially with the with this last one that you were, you know, talking to people face to face and trying to explain what the circular economy is. What, what Did they know anything about it? Did they say, oh, this is like sustainability with a new world? Or I, I, I was, I'm wondering, what, what did they say? Did, do they know anything about it or, or not? Well, about uh, the concept of circular economy, almost anyone knew about about it. But they always thought that, oh, it's about recycling. Some of them wanted to buy the kitchen. So it was uh, a very, like, very good because we were able to, to, to explain. But almost no one knew about the circular economy. So we have to start really from the beginning and stop only thinking and explaining about recycling because it's the idea that mostly uh, all the citizens have that uh, it's just enough to to do recycling, but circular economy is not only about that. So it was very good to to have the chance. And we already have uh, some interesting questions from the audience, but I just want to to remind them again that they can post their questions on on the, in this comment space on the session page or uh, using Twitter and the hashtag ThinkDiv. But before we get into the into these questions from the audience, I, I would like uh, Jesus Bea. Um, I would like to move to what is missing or what needs to be done at the national and at the local level of Valladolid uh, from your perspective. So maybe, Bea, uh, you can start by telling us, in your opinion, what has been overlooked in Spain and what we need to do to make the circular economy a successful approach in, in this country. Yeah, OK. OK, so let's go. Um, what I think what uh, is missing in companies is that uh, I think they should adapt part of the processes to the circular economy, because sometimes uh, the whole business design doesn't include circular economy. I think um, it's just not about the waste, because almost no companies want to talk about reducing their inputs. inputs. So I think that's important. Uh, I think it's going to be very useful also to include eco-design in the products, uh, more quality instead of quantity. And also, I think uh, in companies, there's still no real consensus when it comes to implement it. 
because there are many things to define. Uh, for example, you can find circular economy uh, in a company which can be very efficient in waste management, but after their products travel from one continent into another. So it's that circular economy, we don't know yet. Um, also, I think that is missing a circular culture, a circular thinking around the relationship that we have with the environment. So there should be a, some symbiosis between the government, society and the companies with a common circular vision. So now I think we really have the opportunity to create an economy that is uh, beneficial to everybody, to, to all the parties. And uh, we don't have to disagree on that because uh, in the end, an economy, I think, should be based uh, on the development of its individuals, uh, not only in their financial growth. So I think the price shouldn't be the only concern. And lastly, what I think is uh, missing also is the art of reducing, because um, we live in a reactive society. And I think the circular economy is really looking for prevention. So before we solve our problems, I think it's better if we don't create them. For me, this is something quite revolutionary to, to work for the prevention instead of for the reaction, because I think the art of reducing is one of the fundamentals and I should, should be applied uh, in reducing also the amount of, of new products. I completely agree with you that that should be one of, of the priorities of the, of the circular economy. And isn't that like the second point that you touched upon about creating a circular culture that was also you know, mentioned during while you were explaining the, 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 that kitchen that you moved around several neighborhoods in, in Valladolid. Um, isn't that what you're trying to do with your startup or that you just set up, I think? And, and maybe you can give us a little bit of how can we find out, out more about, uh, about that? Yeah, yeah, you are totally right. Uh, I think circular economy should start in the mind because it's the most difficult part to get the new concept and new behavior and new ideas into the mind of the citizens. So what I'm trying to do also with my startup is to bring this new knowledge and this new way of doing things because it has to be something that uh, is uh, an action. No, It cannot only stay in the mind, but should start in the mind in the end. So um, I'm doing now uh, through some workshop and some education programs. And you can follow it if you want in my website. That is bcircular.org uh, and yeah, <laughs> mostly. <laughs> Thank you, Bea. Uh, maybe and now, uh, Jesus, you could you could also give us uh, your opinion on, on what is missing in Valladolid and, and what might be the next steps to, to, to develop further this concept in, in Valladolid. Well, actually, as, as Bea said, so we are trying just to foster this symbiosis between government, society and companies For the on one hand. And on the other hand, we are in, in, a, in a test phase. I mean, um, we launched so this this kind of uh, subsidies and grants as well last year, and we're testing also for the very first time as well this and on, on the city. And we are planning uh, to uh, um, we are planning to to launch uh, the second second year of, of subsidies in order just to uh, follow up as of this uh, this path. Um, actually. Uh, the agency and the city itself also is a, a very good testing point also for these initiatives. Uh, on one hand, also we have Bea here. <laughs> uh, she took part on, on the uh, on, on the circular weekend in the in the first uh, in the first circular weekend in Spain, uh, whole Spain. And uh, uh, nowadays, also we are in the in the, in the second one circular circular weekend second one, which are trying to. Um, Accelerate new ideas, uh, newcomers, uh, uh, well settled uh, down enterprises. You know, just to to see also how they uh, they integrate themselves also in the in the in the um, the ecosystem, economy ecosystem. Um, and we are looking lo looking very closely as of the traceability of the of these projects. I mean. Um, we are not just uh, uh, launching this these subsidies in order just to, to well to get to get lost so well, in but uh, we are we are following up very very closely as so well how they, they are developing if they are focusing in some sectors and you uh, know just to put the the municipality money as so well the, uh, the citizenship money uh, in in some in some sectors which are very very important for the for the for the city and uh, you just you have mentioned like the collaboration between uh, businesses and, and the agency of 
for innovation and economic development. And, and I'm sure that in entrepreneurship and new businesses are, are key in this circular economy transition. But also one topic that is very close as well to, to, to the Disruptive Innovation Festival is education and learning. So I'm wondering if, if it would be interesting uh, to maybe um, implement a little or create, let's say, the, the learning resources at the University of Valladolid or maybe at some uh, vocational schools or how we call them in Spanish, Escuelas de Formación Profesional. I think, I think it would be really interesting to introduce this topic. And I don't think that it should be only limited to uh, students uh, studying economics, but I think especially students uh, that are studying economics should learn about this. So, so I, I'm just, I don't know, like sharing an, an idea with you and I want to, sh to hear your opinion on that. Well, actually, as, actually, as, as far as, as, as uh, we are concerned, we are concerned. As Valladolid is trying to introduce as a circular economy um, um, uh, idea uh, in the academia, as well, and the academia is taking part of this uh, of this uh, project. So um, we have uh, nowadays so three or four four. Uh, projects uh, from some um, some agencies, uh, the university itself, and uh, um, and other institutions. We are we are very keen to just to 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 um, to foster the uh, circular economy, uh, and uh, what uh, um, related to the schools. So uh, um, we are trying uh, in our uh, Via Creativos this is a program which uh, we are launching every year from the agency and uh, the municipality of Valladolid. We are trying just to to uh, gather uh, until ten schools in order just to foster one topic. And this year it will be a secret economic topic. Okay, I'm I'm, I'm really really glad to, to hear that that that, that is happening. Uh, in yeah, sorry, Laura. I would like to say that also the Chamber of Commerce, they are trying to develop a master. It's, it's still ongoing, but uh, they really want to, they are preparing you know, the new master of circular economy and hopefully maybe next uh, course we will have it here in, in Valladolid. And would it be in the, in the Faculty of Economics? Uh, no, the Chamber of Commerce. Okay, okay. Sorry, I, I misunderstood you. And uh, okay, so now I want to move to one question that we got on our session page uh, from Ricardo. And he's asking us, what were the first problems that Valladolid had when implementing these circular economy strategies? And what did, uh, what did they do? I, I assume that the, he, he, he's talking about the city council to solve those problems. So maybe that's a question more for you, Jesus, as, as, you, as you work there. But actually, actually, we are um, we are very excited about the circular economy. As well, we faced some projects, as well, which are um, uh, the, the enterprises are trying just to implement as well, this project uh, within a frame of a year. Um, uh, some of them um, they could uh, realize as well, how uh, difficult it is to implement some uh, some um, this topic as well, some some actions in the city. Others uh, realized as well that it was very, very easy. As far as uh, we are concerned as municipality, as well, we are, as I said, as well, in a testing phase. So um, we are just, to, just seeing as well how the market are developing. And um, at the end of these subsidies, as well, I mean, as of February uh, 2019, as well, we'll see if the enterprises are uh, facing some restraints and constraints or, or just uh, limit so in the city with, with what the city offers or what the city uh, put on the, on the table as, 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 as limit of frames. But actually, as well, we are just uh, we are just testing. Uh, we are just seeing that. And uh, I must I must say as well, as uh, the political the political level are supporting us as a fully. So we are we have no no constraints in this in this field. Thank you, uh, Jesus. And actually, we had just received one more question on the session page from Emily and she's asking what can the residents of Valladolid do to help the, the circular economy gain traction uh, from the grassroots? So we have a lot of, I, I guess we have people in the audience concerned about what can be their role uh, as part of, of this uh, transition from a linear to a circular economy in Valladolid. Okay, so I'm going to start. Um, I think I will talk as a citizen huh, from Valladolid uh, that I think the most important part is just to start leader, leadering yourself. Because uh, when I was uh, doing the experiment no, in the street, 
I was able also to have a very good uh, chat with people who start taking uh, um, putting their values into their shopping. So they say, okay, I want to create circular economy by, in my house and I want to buy as I want, maybe with less packaging. So I think to start changing your habits little by little uh, gives you a very good understanding of what is circular. We have already a new citizens leaders that, uh, that are starting following this circular economy. I don't know if you would like to add. Well, so um, we are putting forward so the train, training actions and uh, awareness actions in the city. I mean, so this is the very first step. So we we can we can do as you know in order to foster the circular economy in the city, to uh, raise awareness also not from from all the stakeholders, and uh, citizens can start with the circular economy not only taking part in this in this uh, training actions. Uh, in this circular weekends, uh, but also uh, every day in, the, in their in their homes as well. As first step is just uh, to uh, to get involved, as well, to 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 say, okay, I want to start as well with uh, some actions uh, in my own home, and then as well to join other um, training actions and other just to to uh, to see how can they uh, um, help other their. Uh, sections or the actions of the sectors or the citizens in, uh, to, to, to get involved in, the, in, the, in this new wave. Thank you. And I, and I want to do one last question that actually came up in a session this morning. And I, and I would like also to, to, to ask that question to you. And, and this person said, if you have the funding, let's say 1 million euros to invest only in a particular circular, in only in a particular sector or business area, what would it be? And I want both of you to give me that your opinion. I know that you know probably from the city council, as we have seen, you're investing in in several sectors. But if you had to choose one that is crucial or really really central to this transition, uh, what which one would it be? <laughs> okay, one on one. <laughs> Go. <for it. laughs> I would like to say so. We are um, in these new subsidies as of plan as of the next year. So we are focusing on plastics and bioplastics, definitely to reduce as of the plastic use. Okay, and my answer would be like in education, <laughs> because I think in education you're able to to put the seed that we need to, to start changing from the from the roots you know, of society. So I think, yeah, if we really want to have a, a important change, we need to start with the our generation, but also the ones that are coming, who are going to receive uh, all the the result, all the handover, no, of the of the consumerism that we have been <laughs> doing in this uh, last era. Yeah. <laughs> well, then maybe you can both combine and educate people about how single-use uh, plastics are not okay yeah, for, for sure. our environment. Maybe you could combine each other. <laughs> just, yeah. Okay, um, so unfortunately, this this session has to come to an end now. Uh, would you like to add anything else before I wrap up this session? Mm. Well, um, we are very we are very happy as well about the results as of our call as of uh, uh, subsidies in the, in the municipality. Um, I think it's not very easy just to uh, define, design, and to implement one one actions uh, uh, in every city. Although we are a middle range city, which are relatively as well easily uh, to implement uh, than uh, other cities. And uh, I must be very grateful also about all these uh, new projects came as well in this new call, which has doubled the, the number of the last year projects number. So um, the response of the, uh, the, via the citizenship and uh, entrepreneurship ecosystem also is, uh, really, is really big and uh, I'm grateful. Yeah, and I would like that, yeah, uh, as Jesus said, uh, there are a lot of people concerned about what is happening and they really want to get involved and they don't know how. So uh, to have the opportunity also to participate in projects of uh, circular economy is a very good way of, of bringing solutions instead of adding more problems into what is going on now. So that's will be yeah. <laughs> And thank you also, Laura, and all the, the festival to give us the opportunity no, to, to be here and to show Valladolid in the red color in the map. <laughs> At least I think <laughs> people will know <laughs> where we are. <laughs> thank, thank you very much. I think, thank you. Uh, <laughs> and we, have to, we have to raise awareness as well. <laughs> <laughs> 
well, you're completely right. <laughs> we still have to reach many people, uh, you know, that don't know still about the, about the circular economy. So I hope that the audience online has found this event as interesting as I did. I particularly loved hearing about or how the circular economy concept is being disseminated in Valladolid, thanks to all these exam all these projects and events that are taking place. Uh, thank you, Ben Jesus, for taking the time uh, to tell us about the, the circular economy journey taking off in Valladolid. And, and if you still have thoughts or comments or questions that you want to ask Jesus and Bea, please put them in the comment space because they will be able to, to answer them after, after this conversation. And if you are watching the recording of this session, we still want you to ask these questions to them. So please put them there. And now I have bad news and good news. The bad news is that tomorrow, unfortunately, is the last day of the Disruptive Innovation Festival 2018. But the good news is that we'll still have a full day tomorrow and that you can still watch all the sessions that you've missed. So tomorrow at 10 a.m., we will be exploring if the current old system that is generally a bit hesitant to adapt to a new era, has what it takes to provide ethical, innovative, equal, useful, and human-centered financial services. This session is called the Real, Disrupti the Real Disruption of Financial Services, and we will be joined by Luisa Martinez, which is an ambassador from One, One Young World, and she's representing uh, Uruguay in this organization. Also, if you've watched our fantastic documentary called System Reset, tomorrow at 11 o'clock, you will get a chance to meet the people who have made the film in our lovely studio. And if you haven't watched it, then you have something amazing to do tonight. Look for it on our website, System Reset. Thanks again one more time to Bea and Jesus, and remember to catch up on everything that we have going on at thinkdiff.co. Gracias. <laughs>